Okay, so, you know, we're going to start with D flip flop today, T flip flop, and then we're going to move to something that's called uh, uh, flip flop conversion. While we are moving, we're going to learn the FSM, which is a finite state machine, which is having the uh, state table, table, and state diagram then you know we're gonna move into analysis like you know i give you the implementation of the circuit you will go ahead and you build it as a you convert it to state a state diagram or you take the state diagram and you implement it using flip-flops so you know state table to implementation using flip-flop or implementation to state table and then you know state table to uh, state diagram and the vice versa right then we're gonna move into the uh, definition of the registers we're gonna move to counters. And then, you know, we're gonna move to the sequence detector. And if we have some time left of this course, we're gonna be covering also the shifting and rotating a lot, uh, using the combinational circuit. Okay, so, so far, you know, we learned that, you know, in the flip-flop, we have three different things. Everybody agree? Uh, let me turn on this. Uh, yeah, so what we learned? One, we have a two stable. Two, we have what? Characteristic table. Excitation two. Yeah, or the state table we called. Then we have the third guy, which is what excitation table. So those are the three most important information we're gonna use for what, for the sequential elements, which is the flip flop, right? So far, what we learned, we learned the SR, S, R, and that's actually positive edge of the clock, and we have here the Q. You complement, right? And then you know we learn the improvement of the SR. We started the early stage of the JK flip flop. We figure out the JK flip flop has a problem, which is basically the the risk conditions. We figure out how can you fix the risk conditions, and you know we came into the conclusion that we have to have two different SR flip flop passing to each others, and then you know we're gonna make this loop back. To the latches, they're going to be part of it working in the positive edge, or in the other in the negative edge, and that's actually fixed the risk condition thing, right? So instead of being like toggling like this under the one positive edge of the clock to the high, it's going to be from positive to positive or negative to negative, right? And we made the two stables and the state tables and you know excitation tables. Now we need to move our gear. To the, I have some documents I wrote by my hand long time ago. I can share it with you also under the supporting materials folder of today. So I already created um, a folder under the 2300 uh, course documents. It's called week 12. It has recorded lectures. It's going to be just recorded once it will be done. And the supporting material, it will be whatever I have as a written handed uh, thing. I'm going to uh, share it with you. You know, hopefully you guys will understand my handwriting. Okay, it's uh, quite interesting to actually talk this way. You got used to it. <laughs> you used to it, yes, exactly. Thank you. Anyway, so now you know we're gonna go into the. We figure out that you know there is a four possible states. JK flip flop is covering, which is a kind of victory for us because you know now we don't have unused space, right? And we said you know out of this people came into configuration, which is helping us to get two other uh, flip flops, right? 
So if I have a JK flip flop like this, that's with my J, that's my K, and here is my clock. Of course, you know, you guys know this, those guys are not intersecting, right? So I just want to be sure that, you know, you guys are on the same page. So maybe I can use a different color. So that's a different thing, right? And then, you know, I have here Q and Q complement. We agreed in the four states we have in the table of the JK flip-flop, there is the, the boundaries, which is one zero zero and one one. That meaning gonna be a memory or inverting of the memory, while the one in the middle is just flipping, right? It's like inverting the situation. So if I want to look at it as a D flip-flop, what should I do? That means I'm looking to the two states in the middle, which is zero one one zero. If I want it to be T flip-flop, that means I'm looking into the new state that I invented by using the JK flip-flop, which is uh, when it was unused in the SR, which is basically one one, right? Which is giving me the toggling, right? So in that case, you know, I can I can expect that you know if I if I'm looking to the if I'm looking to the T flip-flop, I'm looking to JK to be short short handed by this by short circuit. And the new wire is called here T. So T can be zero, T is can be one. So if I extend this T when it's zero, that means my J is equal zero and my K is equal zero. So that means the state that I'm actually memory, storing the current state. But if it's one, that means my J is equal one and my K is equal one. So that's actually the state that is converting whatever is actually stored, right? So pretty much I can make a fancy twist table like this saying, you know, clock with T, right? And from there, I can come and say like this, if it's positive edge, so no matter what is the value of T, I'm actually memory, all right? So I can come and say that, you know, uh, QN plus one is QN. So the current next, right? Or I can just remove it like this and I say memory, right? Then if I have here positive edge, that means I'm an active. So I'm an active, that means I have two possibilities. I'm here in zero and I'm here in one, right? So if I'm in zero and I'm an active, I'm still memory, right? While while if I'm positive and here is one, basically I'm flipping whatever inside, right? So gonna be here Q and complement, here is Q and here is Q and. So pretty much what's in front of you now is a true stable of the T flip flop. Any questions so far regarding this part? Is it, is it mostly clear or there is something that's not clear? I would like to hear from everybody, you know. If you think it's clear, please give me like a thumbs up or, you know, yes or something in the chat. So, yeah, Christopher, give it to me. Did you scroll up briefly? Good. So now we're going to move to the next candidate. I think for somebody has to scroll up a little bit. Yes, I think it was Joseph. Huh? Yeah, just a little bit. What happened? So can you scroll up a little bit? Here? Uh, just a tiny bit more. Okay. Yeah, that's right. There. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna move to the next important one, which is basically you now the our lovely candidate characteristic or state table, right? So characteristic table. In the characteristic table, my inputs are the inputs plus you know my movement of the delay, right? So I pretty much saying that you know I have like a Q and and T when I loop back, right? You remember this circuit I made in the beginning of the thing, the combinational circuit and the output will be delayed, then it's gonna go with the input, then it will reduce the new output and so on. You remember this? This is gonna be in our head for the rest of our life in digital logic if we are working in sequential circuit. So now I have two inputs. So that means it's providing me with how many states? So four. I have, huh? four states, you're right. So it's gonna be one, Two, three, four. So zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. Right now is the lovely part. Look, zero. So that means I'm QN. What is my QN? Is zero. One. 
I'm inverted of the QN. What is my QN in this case? Is zero, flip it, right? I'm zero, perfect. So I'm QN, what is my QN at the moment? One. Oh, I'm one, my perfect. So the QN will be inverted. What is my QN is one, flip it. <laughs> right? Have you noticed something? QN plus one is actually the XORing between QN and T. Oh. That makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so pretty much I can come and say QN plus one is equivalent of the QN X or T. That's very interesting, right? Now we need to see our lovely excitation table, which is basically providing the future and the present to give me what is the new next input. So, you know, I have to go ahead like this and say QN, QN plus one, and I'm I'm checking what T will be because I flipped, right? So we're gonna be here one, two, three, four, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. Then I look, yes, here is zero, here is zero. Is there any other thing that is also zero and zero? I don't think so, right? So in that case, T is zero, right? Then, you know, I'm looking for zero one. How many zero one I have? I have this one and this one, right? Sorry, this one and this one. So what is the output in this case? T is going to be, that's T, so it's going to be one. They're going to have one zero. Uh, can you see one zero here? Uh, Something is not correct, right? So you basically get the same table as the last one. Yeah. It should be the same, right? Yeah. Yeah, zero, one, one, zero. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be like this. It's going to be XOR also. Okay. So in that case, I finished the three different tables I have for the T flip flop. Do you have any question? That was the excitation table? That's the excitation table. All right. Professor, actually, uh, I do have a question, but it's kind of a general one. Sure. Uh, so my question is, when you're going from one flip flop to another, I remember you mentioned it, but I it was briefly. You used the characteristic table. Uh, oh no, I'm gonna show you now. So after okay. I finish the T and D, I'm gonna start moving from one to the other. <laughs> okay, okay. Take okay. your time. You know, you know, we're gonna have fun here. You know? Okay, so you know, I'm with you until I finish this course from A to Z. You know, okay. Oh, and uh, one more question, Professor. Yes, sir. So since these are the exact same, it would be T equals QN X or with yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you can come and say that into the equation, say T is equal to QN X or QN plus one. All right, thank you. Super. So now we fully understood what does it mean, the, um, the excitation table and um, characteristic, right? So. I think I have something is not correct here. So let me just check one second, please. Hmm. Ah, interesting. Somehow I have something is not correct. Yeah, that's fine, okay? Anyway, now, if you would like to go into the deep flip flop, right? Deep flip flop is basically, is picking the one, two states in the middle of the JK, right? So how can you do it? The only way to do it is put inverter in one of them, right? So if you have a JK like this, we have here the Q, so here's my clock. If I do like that, so I'm 100% sure I will never be zero, zero, or, you know, one, one. I'm either way, zero, one, one, zero. Let's try to play this game, zero here. So zero here, he's gonna be one. One here, so the one is gonna be here. And then, you know, that one will go inverted to be zero. 
So pretty much, you know, we took the slightly information from the old, uh, what's called, all the uh, two stable of the JK flip flop, right? So you can just make a two stable very easy like this. Say that, you know, um, D with block, and then, you know, Q as an MO, or QN. One, two, three. Not happening, 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 X, V, O, one. You guys agree? So from there, I can give you the table directly because I don't want to waste your time. So, do you remember the do you remember JK flip flop uh, uh, when it was one z one z one? That what was the value? Can can somebody give it to me? J um, was it equal to zero? So, so he's gonna be zero. Yeah. And he's gonna be one, right? Yeah. So and here is what? Q previous or memory? Yeah, I have no idea, basically. Mm -hmm. So have you noticed? So the n is equal to the out. The n is equal to the out after a certain amount of time. So that's why it's called, hello, can you hear me? Live? Live? Oh yeah, I was talking about Melvin's uh, mic, not you. Oh, okay, I was just- No, he's talking that about was, mine. My that was Joseph's mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my fault. Sorry. Okay, anyway, you're fine. I thought that maybe the 3D printer noise is actually affecting in the background. Anyway, so anyway, so you know, think about it. You know, what does D mean? It means data flip flop. It means data flip flop. What does it mean, data flip flop? That means I store the data from a moment. I store the data from a moment. You, we use it heavily for building what something is called registers. And if you scale up the register, you build memory. So, you know, if you use the D flip flop, you can use it for storing data. That means, you know, you will hold the data for a while. And then, you know, when this data would come out, you know, you release it up, right? Example, for instance, you know, if I have like, you know, one, two, three, four flip flop like this. And those, all of them are what are working together in, same clock. Then I will just go ahead and do like this. D0, D1, D2, D3. Then I will have Q0. Q1, Q2, Q3. What is literally I'm doing here is basically every single positive edge of the clock, Q will equal D. Right? So imagine that you wrote here zero, zero, one, one. What does it mean? It means that you know you wrote 12. If you are considering D3, D2, D1, D0 from the left to the right, most significant to the right. So gonna be one, one, zero, zero. So you are saying that after one edge of the clock, which is positive, what will happen? Q, Three Q two Q one Q zero will be equal what D three D two D one D zero no matter what is the value. So in that case, after one positive edge, that value would be written here as an output. Imagine what we did now in front of you is basically what register. So if you fully understand what is D flip flop, you will understand the topic I started in the beginning, which is called what registers. Sounds good? Let's see the next thing. So D flip flop, if you notice everything is flipping, when the, when that um, uh, inversion happened was one one, right? So in that case, actually I'm flipping every single cycle. 
So every positive edge of the clock, I'm flipping. So what is this meaning? It's counter. Let's think about it. Look, look, look at this. Anyway, let's look at this. What? Is, come on. Okay, I understand. Anyway, so anyway, so let's see this, right? What does the counter mean? Look, counter in definition. What does it mean? Counter means that you know you have a initial state. As you're writing, you see, right? When you say I would like to build a counter, you make initial state equal something, and you make that state zero, right? Then you will come and say you know C in T is equal C in T plus one. That means every time you increment by one, right? So, you know, that means, you know, I have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like this, right? So, are those your inputs? So, that means every single output, look, zero, you're expecting one. One, you're expecting two. Two, you're expecting three. Three, you're expecting four. Four, you're expecting five. Five, you're expecting six. Six, you're expecting seven. Seven, you're expecting what? Zero. <laughs> Right? So pretty much what you're doing, let's, let's flip it and see, right? So one, it's gonna be one, zero, zero. Two, zero, one, zero. Three is what? Uh, one, one, zero. Four, zero, zero, one. Five, one, zero, one. Six, zero, one, one. Seven, huh? Is what? <clears throat> one, one, one. Zero, one, two, three. Look at this, look. You know, one go to zero, zero go to one, one go to zero, zero to go to one, one go to zero, zero to go to one, one go to zero, zero to one, zero go to what to one. So what you are doing every single time you are flipping, right? So that's why our lovely T, which is standing for transition flip flop, is a very very good perfect sequential element to build counters. Then we're gonna learn what difference between up counter the down counters and all of these things. So if you fully understand today, we are done with the course. So, so far, everybody underst uh, understood, you know, somehow, you know, whatever I'm trying to show you today, is it clear enough? Yeah, I, get, I get the introduction. I can't wait to get a little bit more deeper, but yeah, I think I get You're gonna go with too much in details, don't worry. You know, I'm gonna like, you know, kill the details itself. But anyway, so the most important thing that, you know, you know, if somebody asks you, combinational, I have a two stable input, output, I know number of states, KMAP, implementation, I'm done. I know equivalence between uh, gates, right? Then sequential, I have to have three things and I don't need to memorize anything in my head. I just, what is the only thing I need to know is our latch. If I know how to work, I'm done, right? So that means, you know, I make two stable from there. I can make excitation, sorry, uh, characteristic quotation state, state table. From there, I can just move forward to excitation table, right? Then I, from there, I figure out there is something that's called SR. And I know SR latch, it was a problem with the unused state. Then I add the clock aspect. Then I found also unused state. Then I started to improve myself with JK. I figure out some problem, which is called toggling or risk condition. Then I add extra master and slave, you know, two latches behind each other with the feedback at the end. I figure out that's actually fixing the problem and I state this as a JK flip-flop. Then, you know, I took some slide state from out of the JK flip-flops. I named it data flip-flops and I call it G flip-flop. I took the other upper states, you know, the boundaries between zero, zero and one, one, I make a transition. And that was transition flip-flop, which is using for counters. If I understand very well all of this concept, I'm done with sequential. What I'm doing with uh, Dr. Ali till the end of the course, I just practice. So it sounds interesting. Yes, I just have one question. Uh, yes, I know this is really far ahead in the course, but finite state machines, it involves both combinational and sequential? Yes, finite state machine is coming soon. It's actually coming from the state table. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yes, because you know what is finite state machine? It means the current state, what it will do with the input for the next state. Who is current state QN? Who is the next state QN plus one? Who is actually representing this state table? So if you understand state table, characteristic table, also you are done with finite state machine. So that means whatever we are learning sequential so far are the most important part. Thank you. Clear to everybody? Now, 
you know, some practice, which you guys will love, which is, you know, what's the, what is the procedure I should follow if I would like to convert from flip-flop to the other? So I have to follow some steps. There is infinity number of resources in internet. You can look at it. YouTube, you know, you read the book, you know, you practice in online testing saying, you know, whatever. But you know, what is the best way to do it is to think. If you think about it, you don't care about people, right? So first of all, when I say that I would like to make flip-flop conversion, I have to follow something in my mind, which is what? What I have in my hand, what I need to reach out, right? So I have to think about available and I have to think about required. What is available? What is required? From where I have to start, from where uh, should I end, right? Then I make a characteristic table for the required flip-flop. So here, this is the flip-flop. This is flip-flop. So the second step in the row is going to be the state characteristic table of <coughs> required flip-flop. Then from there, I will find QN, QN plus one somehow, right? I will take the two Q in and Q in plus one in my head as an excitation. So that means I'm gonna use the excitation, excitation table of who the available flip flop. Okay. Once I get the available flip flop, I will just make K map of the excitation table out of this. And from there, I would write my Boolean, Boolean expression of the available flip-flop. And from there, I will draw my circuit and I will get my full grade. So from, you know, see, you know, we start from nothing, you know? We don't care about, you know, internet. We don't care about books, you know. We just care about, you know, it's a logic, it's called logic course, you know. That means I just follow logic, you know. What is my source? What is my destination, right? What is my available, let's say, D flip-flop? What is my required SR flip-flop? So then, you know, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the characteristic table of the available, what uh, required uh, flip-flop, which is SR in this case, right? Then I will look at my excitation table on the side of the available and I start using it on the characteristic I have at the moment. I will get the Boolean algebra or the Boolean expression formations. From there, I will draw my circuit in the available one. Then I will get my new flip-flop. Let's play the game, you know? We already set up rules for the game, but we haven't played the game, right? So let's have an example, and the example actually, I'm gonna share it also with you in some documents I have with me here, I wrote by my hand, and I'm sure you will find it in the internet, you know, because I haven't invented the course, you know, <laughs> the course is already generation before I actually was born, you know? So anyway, so, you know, so I would like to move from JK to D flip flop, right? I know that I have to use not gate and all of these things and I will be done, but let's do it systematically, you know? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the following. What is the following? I said, you know, first, who is the available? JK, right? So available, JK. Who is the required? D. Right? So available, required. What was the idea? We have to make the characteristic table for who? Required. D, D flip flop. So who is the required? Q N D Q N plus one, right? Then you know one, two, three, four, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, <laughs> right? So basically, you know, we said you know D flip flop as I remember is pushing the input to the B at the output, right? So what does it mean? That means the D is going to be QN, right? So I can just put it 0, 1, 0, 1. Yay, we finished the characteristic table, right? So far, so good, right? Now we're going to do this trick of the available excitation table. Who is our excitation table? Excitation table for who? For the available. Okay. 
JK, see, this guy is tricky. I know him, he's tricky. Anyway, so that means I'm going to put my excitation table in a side like this. Say QN, QN plus one, JK. One, two, three, four. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. Right? Then, you know, you move to, I, as I remember, because I don't want to waste your time, so going to be here like this. Right? That was from the previous thing I made with you last time, right? That was the excitation table. Look at the fun. Look at the fun. I'm going to go in my state table, right? And I will invent two rows here, and I call them what? J, K. Right? Then I will use the knowledge I learned here from the available excitation table to give me what is well new for this QN with QN plus one. Did you see what I'm doing? So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. QN zero, QN plus one is zero, right? Good. So that means it's going to be zero X. <laughs> All right. Hmm. QN zero, QN plus one, one. One X, right? Uh, one zero, one zero X one. Mm, one 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 X zero. Congratulations, we are done. <laughs> so basically, you know, based in this Q and Q and plus one, you already invented or you know generated the JK out of the available characteristic table of the required, right? Huh? What is the lovely part is missing now? The yeah, Boolean algebra, right? So the Boolean algebra, so that means you're going to have two k-maps, right? One for the j, one for the k. So, you know, you can come and say that I have like this, qn, qn plus 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, <laughs> right? So for j, it's gonna be zero one x x right, zero one x x. I'm right. So pretty much, I can just take this guy by himself and say, you know, lovely j as a function of the q n and q n plus one is equivalent to uh, q n plus one. Oops, sorry. Ouch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That makes sense? Yep. So far, so good, right? But how we need this or we don't need this? We don't need this. <laughs> you know what we need? Imagine what we need. We need the D with JK. Yeah. So pretty much, actually, I need those two with this two because I'm converting from to the others. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to make mistake and I want you to learn from the mistake, right? Actually, I need something to move to something else, right? So why mm -hmm. actually, you know, I need this guy. I need this too. They are function of this too, right? So you understand okay. what I'm saying now or not? Yeah, I, I was actually wondering that. <laughs> like, well, where is he going after this? <laughs> anyway, so in that case, you know, it's going to be Q, N, and D. You have to <laughs> count what you have. Yeah. Jamal, do you understand my point, right? Yeah, I understand your point. Rest of the nation, do you guys understand my point? Yes. Can you reiterate it? So well, let's do it. Let's do it. You know, I love to do stuff, you know, practical, you know. So what I need to do, I say, sorry, Professor Rali was tricking us. <laughs> and then, you know, we will go back to the point, you know. It's basically Q, D, and the output J and K. So in that case, 0, 1, X, X is still the same thing, right? So pretty much I can come and say that, you know, my J is equal D, right? Which is correct. Now let's do the same thing. K is basically function in Q and in D, right? So let's look at it. So, you know, I have here, boom, boom, boom. Then, you know, Q and D zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, two, three, right? So I look at there and say x, 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 um, x, x, and you know, one, zero. Yay, here, right? 
So pretty much I can come and say K is equal to D complement. Yes, we finished. So now pretty much confident I can make implementation very easy, right? I can bring my JK, I bring my, my whole entire thing and let's start my implementation. So how I'm gonna implement it. So I can come and say, here is my K, here is my J, and here is my QN, here is my QN complement, here is my clock. And now I say J is equal D and the inversion of it, I'm gonna go like this. So pretty much I implemented the thing using a systematic method. And instead of the trick method that I told you, oh, you have the big table, you take two of them and you move forward, you know? So by two ways, you know, we are identical here. Any questions so far? We're gonna make more examples. So any questions, any problem, any anything and anything? Okay. If that's the case, maybe we can play the game with between SR and JK, you know? I will make one, one more example or something, and then, you know, I can give you the rest. You can look at it, okay? So for instance, you know, if I say SR moving to, oh, SR moving to the JK flip-flop. <coughs> oh my gosh, 69% since in the morning, dude. Oh my God, like eight hour printing. Anyway, so if I go in there, I say my available SR my required JK. So, huh? what is the next step we said? We're gonna make it what? Characteristic the required, huh? the required characteristic table? Yes, for the JK. So I just go ahead and say that Q and JK, I'm expecting eight states, right? So gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one. Then you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right? Whatever I remember, I will do. Whatever I don't remember, I will remember, you know, somehow, you know? So gonna be here, you know, my Q and, um, how does this thing do when, you know, Q and plus one. Right? I remember when JK is equal zero, it's gonna be stored memory, right? So this guy, memory. This guy, memory. I remember one, one, you flip whatever Q and right? This is what I remember. So, you know, this guy flipping this, this guy flipping this. So imagine I finished four of them while I'm just playing, you know? I finished the rest of the work in a very easy way. Then I can look to the rest, which is basically zero, one, it's gonna be zero, one, zero, it's gonna be one. Then, you know, zero, one, it's gonna be here, um, uh, like this, right? Imagine I finish, I finish, yay, you know? Now I'm gonna do what? I'm gonna put my excitation table on the side, right? But in the top of my head, I want to have what? I want to have my SR here. Right? So, do you guys remember the excitation table of the um, Captain SR? I can write directly the output and you can think about it. 0x, 0x, 10, 10, x0, 0, 0, 1, x0, and 0, 1, something like that, right? Then, the trick of the implementation is gonna be Captain SR was what? the three lovely guys. Right? Like exactly identical, I did this here, right? Look, J, J as a function of the Q and D, K as a function of the Q and D. For this one is different, right? Because you know, I have three input here, it's a Q and, and J and K. So you're gonna do the same thing, right? So I can just put you directly the equation and from there I can come and say, S is a function of the Q and J, R is a function of the Q and K, something like that. 
and you will make your implementation and you move forward. There is more example here between SR, T flip flop, and you know, T flip flop, T D flip flop, and J, K to whatever, whatever, and some other stuff. So, you know, I already have a ton of other examples you can enjoying it and you know, you can play with it and you will find it more interesting, okay? But at least I show you how to do the trick. So any questions so far regarding this subject? So I'm gonna scan this document and give it to you in the under this recorded you know supporting material of week 12. So you can take it with you and you can look at it here. Yeah, thank you very much again. That's you are well, yeah, most thank you for welcome. This. You know, I hope you are gonna enjoy my handwriting. <laughs> Sorry. No, because I know myself, you know, sometimes when I write stuff, I forget completely what language I actually used. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, so now it's completely clear to everybody, right? Because, you know, Juan love finite state machine. You know, I cannot stop this. So I have to help in finite state machine. Okay, so we keep saying state table, state table, state table, state table. What is aesthetic? You know, we have to use it somehow. So we have to learn something that's called um, state diagram and a state equation. And we have the state table. And those family guys actually talking about finite state machine. Okay. When you say finite, that means it has n, right? So that means you have a, a specific number of states. And of course, you know number of the states because every time you know we use number of variables, we say how many states the table will cover. Do you guys agree? So that those are the states. So um, the state table normally is having the present with input and providing me with the next will happen. And we have done this by hand, right? Example, Q and D, Q and plus one. So pretty much this is a state table, right? Because look, present, next, and input. So we learned it somehow, but we didn't know that actually going to work with the state what diagram. Is it clear to everybody what I'm saying? Gloria, Christopher, Dwight. So the only thing we're going to learn here is basically the aspect of defining symbols, symbolic information out of the binary characterization of the state table. What is this crazy stuff, you know, Dr. Alice say? <laughs> so I'm gonna give you an example, right? Um, there is a relation between number of states and number of flip-flops you're gonna use for any implementation, okay? So I'm gonna give you an example. If you find out that, you know, the states you have in the table for so number of flip-flop you're gonna use for implementation gonna be log two of four. Is it clear? Can so- you, Can you repeat that? Can you repeat that one more time, sorry. Again, so a state in general, a state table is a present and next. Sounds good? Yes. Okay, so imagine the following, present QA, QB, and I have X and then, you know, QA plus QB plus. That mean next, or, you know, you can say QA N plus one, QN plus one, whatever, right? So those two guys gonna make it zero, zero, and then, you know, uh, two times, right? Because the X can be zero or one, right? So here's zero and one. Do you guys agree? Or it can be zero and one, zero and one, like this. Or it can be uh, one and zero, one and zero, like this. Or it can be one and one, one and one, like this. Right? <laughs> Do you agree? So this one is a state by itself. Because see, it's repeated. But my X is different. This one is a state by itself. This one is state by itself. This one is state by itself. So this table actually have four states. 
Make sense? So I can come and say QA, QB is zero, zero. Uh, right? If I like to, you know, to draw the state diagram out of this table, I have to make symbolic things. So I say it's zero, zero. I consider it as zero. You know, um, somebody's in the waiting room. Uh, boom. Okay, so gonna be here S1, S2, S3. Then we can start drawing any, you know, the diagram we want. I'm gonna show you how can you draw it in a real, real application. So let me find a very good application for you. You know what? I love to do it on a flip flop. Somebody's telling you, JK flip flop, can you please draw the, draw the state diagram coming out of the flip flop? Somebody will come and say, Dr. Ali, it's a flip flop. Where is the state diagram out of this? I can tell you coming from the state table. <laughs> you know what I mean? Think about it. So I can just go ahead and do like this, you know. If I would like to draw the state diagram of the JK flip flop, how I'm gonna do it, I would say state table QN JK, and here is QN plus one. Do you guys agree? Then I have eight statements here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. So you're gonna be here zero one zero one zero one zero one zero zero one one zero zero one 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 two three four one two three four right you guys remember the thing I don't remember so you know you know what I remember so basically q and z here you're gonna be zero and we have just finished it right and then you know one here you know gonna be zero mm, one here gonna be one and then you know zero here is gonna be one and then it's gonna be zero, one, zero, one, something like that, right? We just finished it, right? Look at the crazy thing. How many, how many Q we have? We just have one Q, right? So that means how many flip flop you need? What? Exactly. Because the Q is giving you two states, zero and one, <laughs> right? So two, so log two of, uh, of two is one. That makes sense. So I can pretty much say that if it's Q n is equal zero, that means it's gonna be a zero. If it's Q n is equal one, I'm gonna make it S one. Right? So drawing this, you have to use bubbles. <laughs> okay. So you have to use a bubble, it's called S zero. You have to call a bubble, it's called S one. Then you know, moving from one to the one in a transition, you're gonna use arcs. And you're gonna define what is written on the arc that's gonna give you the definition of what type of the state machine you are using. Okay, just follow me now specifically, and you will find out it's very easy. So S0, this is zero, this is zero, this is a zero, by the way. You know what I mean? Uh, this is also zero, this is zero, this is a zero. You know what I mean? Uh, here is S1, S1, this is S1, this is one, this is one, this is S1, and the same thing on the other side. So lo let's look at it one by one, right? S0 going to S0 when JK is 0, 0, right? So look, how can I translate this in the state diagram? S0 going to S0 when is the JK is 0, 0, <laughs> right? So if somebody look at this, he will come and say, oh, Professor Ali telling us when 0 go to 0, that means the input actually is causing this is zero, zero. Okay? Did I finish? I have to cover the whole table. So if it's zero, go into zero, also when j is equal zero and k is equal one, right? So that means also possibly it's gonna be zero and one. Just keep it ugly like that and we're gonna clear it, okay? Now we finish the second state. Third state, M0 moving to one. M0 moving to one, right? When? When, when is one zero, right? So I can just write here, J, K, one, zero. Then 
M0 move into 1, when is 1, 1. So here is 1, 1. Right? Then I move forward. Uh, M1 move into 1. Okay? I'm one moving to one. When? When is zero? I'm one. If I'm here, I'm moving to myself. When is zero, zero? JK. I'm one moving to zero. That means I'm in here moving to there. Right? I'm one moving to zero. When is zero, one? So it's going to be zero, one. I'm one moving to one. When is one, zero? So basically here, one, zero. I'm one moving to zero. I'm one moving to zero. When is what? One, one, right? Now it's fantastic, ugly, you know? Let's make it clean, you know? So pretty much I will use my lovely cleaning methodology and say that, you know, I can write here zero X and I can just like, bye-bye, bye-bye, <laughs> right? And then, you know, I can see this, it's gonna be uh, one X. So basically I can say bye-bye, it's gonna be here one X. Then, you know, I see this one, it's gonna be X1. So I can just say, bye, see you, you know, X1. Then I can see here, it's actually zero and one. I can say X zero. If you like, you can just remove those two guys. And imagine what's in front of you now is a state diagram describing the state table of one flip-flop, which is called JK flip-flop. Master, um, yes, sir. I know this is kind of a little bit off topic, but uh, what what is this? This is this is a graph, right? It, like in like in discrete math, you know, where they have the the, the graph theory. That one, that one, yes. That what was it called though? Like simply connect the components. Yes. So you know, there is a graph theory. There is actually a branch of science that's called graph theory. Oh, okay. So, yeah, because I recognize theory, it. You know, it's useful solving problems. You know. Graph theory used for solving, for instance, uh, uh, Kalman, Kalman filters when you know you are, uh, I'd say, recorrecting the path of a, a rocket, for instance. You know? So the rocket is flying, then you know, some information came that you know the enemy can actually knock it down, then you know, basically you're sending a new path, then you know, to do correction. So it has to use, use the graph theory with this transition movement. How this happened? Uh, you have to pay three bucks, so I will tell you the trick. But you know, <laughs> at least you know you understand what's going on with the sys table. Okay. So far, do you guys understand what's going on in front of you? What is exactly I'm asking you to do? I want you to feel comfortable for moving table to state a diagram, state diagram back to the table. So. Oh. In a sense, if I can interject for a bit, in a, in a sense, the state diagram is the characteristic table, but in a more visual form. Is that correct? It is. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Then finite state machine, which is a state also a diagram, it's coming later. But at least I want you to understand this trick. Yes, thank you. Thank you. you are most welcome, sir. Da -da -da. There is some procedure here for designing a circuit using clock or sequential circuit. It's telling you that you know you will learn how to move from state diagram to state table, state table to state diagram, and all these things. You're gonna put the state table as you did before. You're gonna define number of states as we have done here. Have you noticed when we did the send? And you know we have done this one, so you will define how many states. Then you're gonna give it a symbol. You know, say S0, S1, or whatever you want. If you don't want, you can just actually remove S0 and S1 here and just say here 1 and here 0. It's up to you, right? You can make it even complicated, whatever you want, right? Uh, then, you know, uh, determine number of flip-flops. We already learned that trick, right? By making this lock to of number of states, then it will be straightforward. And then, you know, you will start making the excitation table, move into the circuit implementation, and you will be fully implementing state diagram. So what exactly you can think here? You can make implementation from a state characteristic table. You can make implementation from the state table, you can, which is the same thing. And you can make implementation from the state diagram. 
How can you do this? You move from stick diagram to state table. Then you will apply the KMAB, you will just make implementation, right? So if you know all of these tricks, you are set for the rest of the whole entire career. You know? Let's give you an example of something, whatever this something look like, you know, I have no idea, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a draw in front of you and I will tell you this is a state diagram. And we need to get the state table and make a implementation on all these things, okay? Everybody with me, right? So I have here something in front of you like this. Okay, so one in front of me are what? Four states. State is zero, zero. State is one, zero. State is one, one, state zero, one. I can leave it like this, or I can be more fashion person and I just move zero, zero and make it is zero. And you know, I can make a table like this and say, you know, zero, zero, uh, zero, one, one, zero. One one and say S zero, S one, S two, S three. You guys agree? I can do this. Nobody will kill me, you know. I can just do it. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna do something here, which is basically the transition part. And then from there I will define you something in a finite state machine. It's fun, okay? It's gonna be here one one like this, and then you know here like this, zero one, and then you know from there you can just move like this and say zero zero. And then you know from here you can move to be one zero, and then you know from here you can move to a zero zero, and then from here you can be one zero, and from there you can be three one zero. So, so okay, so how did you fill in the arrows again? I will tell you. I'll tell you. It's just, it, it, it's just acceptable. I'm just drawing it, but you know I'm gonna tell you a story. You know, can you guys see this? Have you seen ever uh, a piece of art like that? Yeah. Yeah, you know, this is, you know, yeah. that's for Muhammad Ali. Anyway, so, you know, if you, if you think about it, you will look at weird stuff happening here, right? You have four states, which is basically 0, 0 is 0, 0, 1 is 1, 1, 0 is, is 2, 1, 1 is, is 3. If you want to keep it like this, fine. If you don't, you know, you're fine, right? You guys agree with me? Then you will find out in the arc, when you're moving from 1 to the 0, there is 1 slash back 1. What is this, right? I can tell you, this is input, this is output. So if you have seen something like this, this is the type of finite state machine, it's called what? Look at the form, it's called Mele finite state machine, which is remind you by what? Mele at cbb.edu, my yeah, email address. I was, I was actually about to ask you that, I've looked at that before. Okay, so. You know, if you forget it, just remember this. Then you remember everything. <laughs> okay, so mainly said that, you know, every present state. So, you know, the arc is actually pointing to this, right? So that means this is my present and this is my next. So the present is starting from the arc, the ended in the arc is gonna be the next, right? So in the top of the arc, you define what is the input and output while you are moving from the state to the other, which is defining what the definition of mainly. So the definition of mainly finite state machine is what? The present state with the current input will decide what is the output and the next state. Right? The present state with the input defining what is the next state and what's the output. That's called finite state machine mainly. Okay? So what you learn now, mainly finite state machine, mainly, which is the present state plus input. Output will be what next? state plus output. Okay? What I want you to do out of this, you know, we made it ugly now. Anyway, so what I want to do with is actually to implement it. So somebody give you a state diagram and it's asking you, 
you know, Jamal or Juan or Lai or Jeremy or, you know, uh, Joe or, you know, whatever, you know, go ahead and implement it to me. So I have to move to what? A state table. Okay. So I know my definition of the state table is the following. It's basically I have in, uh, present state, I have input, and I have next state as an output and I have an output. Those are the two wings, left and right, of the any stick table, right? You agree? Now we need to figure out how many flip flop we need. So how many flip flop we need? I can look at this and I say, hmm, those are four states. Lock two of four. So this guy is talking about two flip flop, right? So that means. I'm expecting the output of this. Maybe this is QA and this is QB. The flip-flop, one is called A, one is called B. And I know the output of any flip-flop is called Q, right? So I call it QA, QB, right? So pretty much I can say here, QA, QB, and my input, I give it X. And here, QA plus QB plus. The plus, that means n plus one, you know what I mean? But I don't want to write n plus one, it's gonna be make it bigger, right? And then, you know, I can see here my output is one, why? So what I did in front of you guys, I set up what the variables of in and out of the twist table based on the entire design, okay? Now I can pretty much easy do some craziness stuff. What is this craziness stuff? I can say I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Some books and some formation, and even you know, in the shared document I'm gonna give you, there is you know a way of presenting it saying when is x equals zero, when x y is equal zero, this table will be in instant eight, it will be four, but very dense. Okay, I prefer stuff to be expanded, you know, so you can have fun. So in that case, I can just say zero one zero 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 one right zero one zero one right. So I know this knowledge, right? Now I need to see the uh, what's called the the other side, right? So I look at it, right? Ali said zero zero. And x is equal zero. Oh, and he said zero zero, and x is equal zero. So pretty much, actually, I'm going to what's as an x zero zero, All right? So I can say, oh, so gonna be here zero zero. And what is the output here? Is zero. That makes sense. Now, Professor Ali said zero zero, and the x is equal one. Zero zero. And the x is equal one. So Professor Al is talking about the next is gonna be zero one, and the output in this case is zero. Right? So we're gonna be here zero one. But you got you gotta do that again. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand zero zero one. <laughs> okay, easy. Look, 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 right? Zero zero is a state. Right? So zero zero and my x is equal zero. Right? What is the next? So the next is actually coming in the arrow, right? The next in this case is looping back to itself. So it's gonna be zero, zero, right? And in this case, when I'm looping, the output is zero, right? Okay. Hello? So here's zero, zero, and zero. Then, you know, I said the current state is zero, zero, and my X is equal one. Let's look at where is this? My current is zero, zero, and my X is equal one. So I'm talking about what? The next is gonna be zero one, and the output is zero. Okay, okay, all right, thank you. Five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm joking. Come on. Anyway, so anyway, so now you already got zero one, right? Now, what is zero one, and the x is equal zero, right? Zero one. Let's see where zero one. Zero one. This is our lovely state, right? So maybe I can use different color or shading or something. So zero one. And x is equal what? Zero. Zero, one, and x is equal zero. So that guy is talking about movement like this. So I'm talking about one, one. It's going to be the next. 
So the next C is gonna be what? One, one. But I need to see why I'm moving M0 as an output. So I'm gonna be here zero. You guys agree with me? Super great. Now, zero, one, but my X is one. I need to see what is this? Zero, one, but my X is one. Oh, good, it's going to itself. And the output is zero. So that meaning gonna be zero, one, and gonna be zero. Now we are done with the state of the zero, one as we covered here, right? So now we're going into the state, which is one, zero, right? So one, zero, when X is zero, something, when is X is equal to something else, right? So one, zero, where is one, zero? This gentleman, right? So one, zero, when is X is equal to what? Zero, this, right? So that means I'm going to myself, but my Y is equal to what? One, right? So I'm going to myself. Then while it's one, while it's one here, it's still one, I'm going to zero, zero. So zero, zero, and one. Then the last one, which is one, one. So I'm gonna move to one, one. So look, one, one going with zero as an input. That means I'm switching to one, zero. So that means my next is one, zero. And my output in this case is one, zero. And one, one, but there is one here. So it's basically is moving back to itself. So it's gonna be one, one. And the uh, Y in this case, Y is this case. So what I did now, I completely moved backwards from the state diagram to state what? Table. So far, so good. Do you guys have more time or should we continue next time? <laughs> Probably need to study this part a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we stop here and I'm gonna continue this, resume this next time. So I think on Wednesday, we're gonna have um, Richmond's day, right? So in that case, you have more time to study, <laughs> okay? Till Monday, so I can, you know, finish the rest of the state machine. And then you guys will be ready to finish resistor counters and we'll have fun with up counters, down counters. And, you know, we're gonna design weird circuits, you know? Any questions so far? Any concerns so far? What I would say, it was my pleasure talking to you today. And I'm enjoying the course and I'm enjoying actually the class. And I would like to thank you for the time and effort. I'll do my best also to uh, grade your quiz maybe in the weekend, hopefully. And soon you guys, um, hopefully also all of you will get the best grade as you know, I, it will be reflected for the effort you are actually spending, okay? Sounds great. I would say thank you guys. It was my pleasure and have a wonderful night. Stay safe, God bless you. Thank you, Professor. Prof professor. Thank you, Professor. Okay. Professor, do you have a minute? I have two minutes. All right. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Thank Zero. you, guys. God bless you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Bye-bye. Uh, yeah, don't forget the hash function. Oh, yes. Got it. For sure. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I do have a quick question too, Professor. Just You can have two questions. Yeah, thank you. Well, my question is not related to the class, so I don't know. You want to stop recording or?